Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to do a guide on OBS Studio. Uh, a different guide, it's more about performance, like to make sure that everything is optimized when you're streaming or you're recording or you want to do both. You will not have any like encoding overload issue or stuttering in your games. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty much the ultimate guide. So first of all, right click on it. Make sure that you're running the uh, OBS Studio in Administrator. So super important for that. It will really help with the encoding overload. You want to make sure that the Windows prioritize OBS. So the first thing I want to mention is your uh, preview over here. I know a lot of people is putting the uh, OBS on their second screen. They want to sh see the preview and they want to see the chat. Preview take resources. So if you're limited with your computer, you don't have like a good CPU or GPU, just like disable this and sometimes maybe just look at it if you want to know you you switch your game you do your game capture you want to make sure that you're seeing like your image everything seems good just close it back and it will help you a lot for stuttering when you're playing a game and stuff like that another thing that i really recommend is uh on your source i know a lot of people can have a lot of different source but they're not using all the same source depending on the scene so for example your uh your camera uh, you can say Disactivate when not showing. So if you have a scene without your camera, uh, OBS will make sure that your camera is not running in the background and you're taking resources for that. Uh, uh, for this, for the video, as you can see here, this is like some kind of preview that I'm using when I'm playing Hunt. For the matchmaking here, I can say the same thing. Shut down the source when not visible. So for example, I'm loading, I'm, I'm just waiting on the uh, match to, 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 to stop the matchmaking. And when I will capture my game, I don't want this running in my background when I'm streaming. So it will just automatically close when I will switch my scene to my game scene. So a very good tip that can help you a lot. So now let's go in settings. So in settings, the first thing that uh, we want to look at, it's the output. So first of all, make sure that you're running the advanced one. You will have more option. Uh, as you can see, I always like to split my stream, my recording uh, with two different settings. So we're going to start start with the encoder. Um, it really depends, again, on your computer. If you have a good NVIDIA GPU, definitely use the encoder from NVIDIA. They have a dedicated one and it's pretty good. Uh, and it will not affect your FPS, like maybe 1% to 2% uh, that uh, FPS that you will lose if you're using the one from NVIDIA. If you have an AMD card like me... AMD card is kind of good, the encoder, when you're recording and you can put a lot of bitrate. But when you limit it with Twitch with 6,000 or 8,000, I recommend to use your CPU. It will be better for your image quality. But again, if you have like a 4-core, 8-thread CPU, I don't recommend to stream with your CPU. Just take the encoder from AMD. So it will really depend on the, your computer. Where is your bottleneck? Do you have a, a good GPU? Do you have a good CPU? So it really depends. You will need to do some tests for sure. But if you have a good CPU, just use the one from your CPU. After that, I recommend to rescale your output. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about video later. But I always like rescale on your streaming. Um, so depending on what you want to do, normally I recommend to go with 720p or 900p. I'm not a huge fan of 1080p because of the bitrate. You don't, you can't go really high with your bitrate, and I feel like the image quality is a lot better with 980p 60fps versus a 1080p 60fps at 8,000 bitrate. If you're playing 2K, it again it depends. 900p, you have a lot of post-process rescaling that your computer needs to do. It's taking a lot of resources for none. So I recommend to use something like 1536 uh, by 864. I don't recommend to go with 720p because in 720p, you will see that you uh, all the text is very blurry uh, when you're streaming it. So I'm not a huge fan. So this resolution is kind of good. Like you will have a decent image quality and also your text will look uh, crisp. So that's why I recommend to use that. For the rate control, I'm using CBR. I recommend to use CBR. For the bit rate, normally Twitch is saying it's maximum 6,000, but I did a lot of testing and you can go at 8,000, so you can gain another 2,000 over here. It will help you a lot for, with your image quality, but it depends with your viewer. If your viewer doesn't have like a really good uh, internet connection and you don't have like the, um, the 
the resolution uh, settings when you're streaming because I know on YouTube you can always change it on the flight if you want to see 480p, 1080p and stuff like that. On Twitch, it really depends. Sometimes you have it, something, sometimes you don't when you are not a partner. For keyframe interval, I recommend to go with two. After that, the CPU usage preset. So you have a lot of different presets. Uh, more you're going with slow, more it will take a lot of resources on, on your computer. For an example, I have a 5900X AMD Ryzen. I can definitely stream at medium without any issue. And at slow, I will have some encoding overload. So it really depends on your computer. If you're playing on a four thread and eight, uh, four core, eight thread, and you really need to use your CPU, I recommend something like super fast or very fast. Uh, it really depends. If you have like six core, 12 thread, go with faster. And if you don't want, you have an eight core, 16 thread, and you uh, want a decent image quality, but you don't want to take risk with medium, I recommend fast. Fast is pretty good for the image quality. After that, for the profile, just run I, and it's, this is pretty much it. For recording, recording, it really depends what is your goal. Do you want to do some replay buffer? So you want to re uh, record a 60 second buffer, and if you do a crazy play, you just want to record it, or you just do some recording because you're doing YouTube video. Because in recording, you can put a lot of like a, a more quality recording versus your stream. So in my case, for the encoder, it really depends again what you want to do. For me, it's because I'm streaming and also want to record. So I'm gonna stream with my CPU. And as you can see here, I'm gonna use the AMD encoder to record. So it really depends if, if you're streaming with your Nvidia card, you can also record if with your CPU. But you need to look at, again, to not bottleneck your computer to have any issue with it. So just select what you want. If you just want to record, select the best one. Normally, just go with your processor. So um, you use something like uh, X264. And just like after that, I will show you what are the best settings. So we're going to go lower. So for example here, quality preset, I'm going with quality. I'm going against CBR. And I'm putting... Um, 15,000 bit rate because the AMD encoder is not that bad. It's not good as Nvidia, but when you give them um, more bit rate, your image quality will be good. So I recommend to always put more bit rate when you do some recording and you should be fine with this. The last one is the audio. Uh, I'm recording everything at in the track one. I don't split my microphone and my uh, desktop sound. So everything is there. Really cool feature here. You can now do 320 kilohertz. So it's a lot better for your sound quality. So I'm recommending to use that. After that for the video, this is what I said before. I don't recommend to touch your output here. I recommend to touch it directly in your output depending on uh, when I stream, I just rescale it. And when I record, I don't touch it. So in video, just stay at native. So your base here, if it's 1080p, stay at 1080p and your output is it's 1080p, just go 1080p. You really want to change those settings in the output over here. For the downscale filter, it really depends. Honestly, for me, Bcubic is really good and also Lengzus. Lengzus, I had a couple of issues with my previous NVIDIA card before, so that's why I'm not using it now. But uh, Bcubic, it really do a good job. The last setting here, you have your common FPS value. This one is a bit tricky. Um, it's taking a lot of resources FPS. And honestly, if you're playing a slow paced game, an RTS game, mobile game, or I don't know, Animal Crossing, you can definitely go with 30 FPS and your uh, stream will look very sharp and very crisp. If you're playing first person shooter, you need the, the 60 FPS. So just make sure that you have a good balance between your resolution your amount of FPS and the bitrate that you can send. If you're recording, it's not an issue. You can crank up your bitrate. But if you're streaming and you're limited by the Twitch platform, for example, don't go too crazy with your resolution when you're using 60 uh, FPS because you will see that your image will degrade a lot when a lot of stuff will happen in your uh, stream. So this is pretty much it, guys, with my guide uh, for OBS, a performance guide. If you have any question, just come in in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and uh, the amount of RAM that you have. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.